gives good teams a shot at postseason play. And last night, New York. Dan Pope is a popular guy with the area baseball and softball teams. It has been a great spring break week. A lot of ball games, and that's important, Steve, because we've got some league action coming up already. The beautiful spring weather is helping the area high school baseball teams get ready for league counting play. And the Southern Oregon Conference schedule will open this Saturday with Medford and Roseburg doing battle at Miles Field. The noon doubleheader will pit the strong Indians against an inexperienced Black Tornado squad. But Jim McAvee's troops improved to 3-0 and in non-league play this afternoon by stopping Crescent Valley. The Black Tornado held a 4-2 lead here in the top of the fourth of today's game, but the Raiders tied things up with a two-out double. That ball falls in behind Medford center fielder, and runners will come in to score from second and third to make it a 4-4 contest, but that's where the rally ends. A perfect relay from the outfield nails the runner coming into third, and the Black Tornado will come in and take control with a sixth run bottom of the fourth. This is the fourth straight walk issued by the Raiders to open the inning. John Newgear strolls across to put the Black Tornado up by a 5-4 score. Then John Houston will crack a shot into the hole at short that's bobbled. Everyone is safe and Medford leads it by two. Two more runs came in via the free pass. There were seven bases on balls in the bottom of the fourth. And then Jason Heidegger finally gets a pitch to hit. He sends a fly out to center field and it's deep enough to let the runner from third tag up and score. The Black Tornado were in control with a 10-4 lead after four innings. 11-7 Medford is the final. Black Tornado coach Jim McAbee says if his team continues to work hard, they'll be in the hunt in the conference race. We're real inexperienced, uh, Joe, so we're looking uh, to rebuild our pitching staff, infield and outfield, and uh, right now we're going to use those four ball games to uh, see what we've got and uh, try to get ourselves uh, ready for Saturday. We have to open with Roseburg, as you say, down here, and uh, they're probably one of the favorites in the league, but we might as well get right after the best club, I guess. We're pleased with the way our pitching started, and... Uh, we uh, we need to work on hitting our, our I think if our defense can come around and be solid we'll, we'll be we'll be in there we're going to gain experience as we play and so if we don't get too far out of it while we're playing why we'll be okay I think with conference doubleheaders opening this weekend the black tornado were thankful for the good weather this week that's allowed them to get in four games the key to the league race should be pitchers and that's given Roseburg and Klamath Union an early edge I look for it maybe to be kind of a real, really a toss-up. I suppose if there's an edge has to be given, maybe the people have the pitching back. Joe you know, um, Roseburg has some pitching back, their catcher's back, and uh, in Klamath they have some pitching back. So, you know, with the doubleheader schedule, pitching probably a real, it's always important, but it's probably more important uh, when you play doubleheader counter. So I'd have to say probably those two people have the edge with their pitching back. After the Medford game. real thing as league play gets underway in most of the conferences in the area. Today, defending Southern Oregon champion Medford hosted Marshfield. Steve Friedman was on hand and has the highlights. Medford opened up scoring in the first inning. Dave Doherty rips a shot into left field, and Shin Yokozawa walks in from third. One to zero, Black Tornado over Marshfield. The Pirates, however, answered in the top of the second. Bill Horning grounds one to left. Medford's Tom Heidegger muffs the ball. That enables Craig Bowska to wheel around from third base and score. But Chris Harbison is out trying for third. Game tied up at 1-1. Medford got the lead right back in their half of the second inning, though. Scott Hall launches a sacrifice fly deep to center field with Alex Onfrey on third. Onfrey tags up and scores. 2-1 Medford after two innings. In the third, John Houston sends one high, wide, and handsome over the center fielder's head. That scores Yokozawa all the way from first base. And then watch Houston. He gets a triple and a one-base error as he stretches it all the way home. Four to one, Medford with the lead. Marshfield came back with two runs in the fourth. Ooh. Bill Boyd with a shot over the pitcher's head. That scores Kurt Fisher from second base. Four to two, Medford. The Pirates got another run in the inning. Harbison's slow grounder to second is just slow enough to score Shannon Strong from third base. Four to three, Black Tornado. But Medford took the lead for good on a two-out error in the fifth. Yokozawa at bat. Marshfield's Kurt Fisher bobbles the ball. Gregory scores five to three. Medford goes on to win at seven to four. The Black Tornado end preseason at four and zero. Oh. Medford opens up conference play hosting Roseburg tomorrow at high noon. At Miles Field, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. Once again, there is the final... <laughs> six ...campaign against the Roseburg Indians. These two teams have been said to be the toughest in the league. In today's first game, Medford received some timely hits to squeak past the Indians by a score of 5-3. to three. And in the nightcap, Medford was also a winner by a score of 3-1. to one.
Valley. A big matchup right off the bat, Roseburg and Medford. This one, a twin bill. The game at Miles Field, and Roseburg got on the board in the second inning. Johnny Desbians ground out to second base, but it scores Rick Bigloo from third, 1-0 Indians. Still in the second, John Walton mashes one into right field. Steve Del Castillo from third scores, 2-0 Roseburg leads. Walton with a single, a good start for the Indians. But Medford answered in their half of the second inning with a bases loaded. Jeff Berry singles to left. Alex Onofre scores, and so does Dirk Ty from second. Medford got another run in their inning, and that, they led it 3-2. to two. The Indians tied the game in the third. Marshall Taylor singles it in the hole. Brett Betcher comes in and scores. We're all tied up at 3-3, but the Black Tornado scored two more runs and go, to, go on to win it. 5-3 in the first inning. Medford played a very good game after they relaxed after the first few innings. Let's check out the scoreboard now. Medford took a twin bill from the Indians. Black Tornado off to a good start in their SOC title defense. And in softball, Crater won both two close ball games. Jeff Barry recorded two saves. Eagle Point was also a winner in both of its games. In fact, out of the teams that won yesterday, they ended up sw sweeping all their doubleheaders. Klamath Union crushed Hidden Valley. Grants Pass dropped both games to Crater. Mazama, who played a non-league twin bill, also lost both its game, and that was to Bend. And that is a look at sports, Benny. Thanks. ...of the twin bill wins was at Medford, where the Black Tornado surprised Roseburg in the conference opener. The Black Tornado were back at work this afternoon at the senior high, and they'll take a 6-0 season record into this week's schedule. Medford has a Wednesday non-league encounter with Wairika at Miles Field before returning to SOC action Saturday at Ashland. Medford coach Jim McAbee told Eyewitness Sports last week that if the Black Tornado could stay in the race in the early going, they'd be in good shape. But with a sweep of Roseburg, they're off to as good a start as they could be. Pitching ace Jeff Berry wasn't ready for a start on Saturday, but he was able to nail down both ends of the doubleheader with saves. He should be ready for some full-time duty soon. We'll try and have some comments from the Black Tornado for you tomorrow night. Some former Southern Oregon High School downing Wairika in a non-league contest at Miles Field. The first few innings of today's ball game saw Medford's Jeff Berry get some mound work in. Berry is trying to work up to full strength, and he ends a Wairika scoring threat in the top of the first with a strikeout to leave a runner stranded at third. Berry should be ready for starting duty soon for the Black Tornado, possibly as soon as this Saturday's conference counting doubleheader at Ashland. Barry didn't waste any time in helping his team get a lead in the contest. He leads off the bottom of the first with a hard line drive single into center field. And then after Barry stole second, another batter would be hit by a pitch to put runners at first and second with no outs in the inning. The Miners did get the first out of the inning with a strikeout, but moments later both Medford runners advanced with the double steal to put two men into scoring position. Barry would come in to score the game's first run on a Dave Doherty chopper up the middle that's bobbled near second, and with the run in, the Black Tornadoes still have two men on base with one out. Medford added another tally in the bottom of the first when a pickoff throw got away at first base. The Black Tornado led 2 to nothing after one inning. They went on to post a 4-1 to one win. Medford is now 7-0 and on the season and 2-0 and in Southern Oregon Conference play. Dennis, a... Uh... Bernard with the strikeout. Jeff Berry got the win. The Miners didn't make it easy on themselves. Craig Middleton's wild pitch scores Scott Hall from third. It's 4 to nothing Medford. Wairika did get one run. Robert Webb's pinch hit ground out scored Eric Bennett. But that was it for the Miners as Medford wins at 4-1. to one. The Black Tornado improves their record to 7-0 and all overall. 2-0 and all in league play. Medford scored four runs on only four hits and committed two errors. Miners finished with one run on six hits but they committed a miserable six errors. Jeff Berry was the winning pitcher for Medford. Black Tornado's overall record now stands at 7-0. and They'll take a 2-0 and conference mark to Ashland on Saturday for a doubleheader against the Grizzlies. Well, entertainer...
The men, no problem in outpacing the other three. And Medford did battle. When it was all over, Medford still had a perfect record. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. Medford, very impressive in the early part of the game. The Medford Black Tornado scored seven runs in the first two innings. And in the third, Scott Hall gets the hit. Hall will then steal second and come in on this wild pitch as he moved to third base with only one out in the second inning. Now Dirk Ty then belts a sharp grounder to short. Ty is out at first, but Hall comes in to score. Medford leads it 8-1 to one there. Now there were some very great plays in this game. Medford, John Houston here, doubled earlier and tried to score from second on this hit to left, but Andy Hauk guns him down and Sanchez makes the tag. Houston out at home. In the bottom of the third, Sanchez hits a routine ball to Hall, but the ball is muffed. Ashland's Jim Miller scores. It's 8-2. to two. Now, bases loaded. Medford's Dean Kinney walks in a run. Hauk touches the plate. It's 8-3, to three, Medford. Let's go to the scoreboard. There you see Medford wins the doubleheader with a 10-7 victory in the first game and 7-4 in the second game. Those scores should say Medford winning both of those games, and they do. You're up today. Medford will be challenged. Roseburg and Klamath Union both have very strong ball clubs. They should be in the hunt for the SOC title all season long. The Black Tornado, though, are ready for their title defense, as Steve Friedman reports. It's always harder the second time around, but that's what's facing the Medford Black Tornado baseball team. Last year's SOC champions have lost some valuable varsity experience due to graduation. This season, the Black Tornado might be in a transitional phase. Uh, we had to rebuild our infield, uh, we're rebuilding our outfield, we're rebuilding the pitching staff, so all of our areas have to be rebuilt this year, and we're in the process of doing that. Many people expected Medford to be a strong defensive club with little firepower from the bats, but so far, the early part of the season has seen the Black Tornado offense explode. I think our bats have really come alive. Um, I wasn't expecting this powerful of a ball club, especially this early. But um, we had a few holes early, and I think we filled them in. We have some good junior hitters. Um, it seems like all nine in the order can hit, and they can hit the ball deep. So I think we got a real powerful and very well-balanced lineup. We're always a very strong defensive team. You know, our pitchers, we're not really sure, but they usually come around. And, you know, as it turns out, we just start ripping the ball all over the place, and it turns out we're, like, a real strong hitting team, and the infield's just kind of picking up right now and starting to move together. So by midseason, we ought to be a really good form. Medford, Roseburg, and Klamath Union should battle it out for the SOC title, but it's a long season, and baseball is a strange game. Still, Coach McAbee might have one advantage over the others. I'm real pleased with our attitude and the way we've been working hard, and I think uh, we have a, a, a pretty good group as far as unity is concerned, and we're working towards the goals uh, that we've set for ourselves in games and for the season. And so as a group, I'm pleased with the way we're working hard right now towards our end results. Uh, like I said before, we've got a lot of things to improve upon. It. At Medford High School, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. Finally, we'll talk just a little back. Sports Watch 12, Steve Friedman has the highlights. Jeff Berry got the starting nod for Medford, and he was very impressive. Berry with the strikeout there. He pitched three strong innings. In the bottom of the third, Berry doubled. John Houston then grounded out to second, scoring Berry from third base. Medford led it 2-1. to one. In the bottom of the fourth, John Newgear strokes a line drive into center field. Alex Onofre comes home from third. Medford led it 3-1. to one. The Pirates got a run in the fifth. Matt Fletcher sends one deep to left field. This one is caught but John Alner on third base tags up and scores as the ball bounces away from the catcher. Black Tornado still lead it three to two. In the bottom of the fifth, Medford scored twice. Scott Hall doubles. Pete Marshall on second base wheels all the way around the score. Medford led it four to two and was ready to break this one wide open. Still in the fifth, Greg Reese goes to the opposite field. Reese gets the sacrifice fly as Houston tags up and scores from third. Medford led it five to two. The Black Tornado scored one more time. Shin Yokozawa rips a shot into left field. John Newgear scores. Medford goes on to beat Phoenix 6-2. The Black Tornado stay perfect at 10-0 overall. At Miles Field, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. Had two, Medford, two of Medford's seven hits. The Black Tornado's biggest scoring outburst came in the sixth inning when they scored three runs. Pitcher Jeff Barry recorded the win for Medford. Skyline Conference. Black Tornado ace Jeff Berry got in a couple of innings of work on the mound this afternoon, but he had to work out of a top of the first jam against the Pirates. 
Phoenix had the bases loaded with two outs when they send a chopper down to first. John Newgear can't find the handle, but Alex Onofre is there. He flips to Barry, covering the bag. That leaves three runners stranded, but Phoenix pitcher Ross Straub also had a clean first inning. The Black Tornado were able to get a runner on first with two outs. That's via the base on balls. And then Dave Doherty sends a shot deep into left field. Looks like this one might carry out, but Paul Watts runs it down at the fence. He makes a fine catch, and it's scoreless after one full inning. Barry had a perfect inning in the second. He was able to send the first two batters down on strikes and then got an easy chopper to short to get out of the inning. The Black Tornado then came in and managed a single run to open the game's first lead. Alex Onofre will be up with one out, and he'll ground one down to third base at John Murphy. Murphy feels it cleanly, but his throw is short to first base, and Onofre is on when the first baseman pulls his foot. Moments later, Onofre steals second and goes to third on the overthrow. He later came in on a chopper in the infield by Jason Heidegger. Medford led 1-0. No finals in from Miles Field this afternoon. The Black Tornado and Crater will play this weekend in SOC action. Also... 6 to 2 non league with the defense is in control Medford's Jamie Ramsey gets out of the bottom of the first with a strikeout to strand a runner and the Black Tornado threatened to break a scoreless tie in the top of the second with one out and Greg Reese on first after a walk Alex Onofre's shot up the middle is bobbled by Jim Parker Medford has two men aboard the Mustangs put themselves deeper into the hole moments later when a Jeff Cost pitch gets by to put both runners into scoring position but Cost will bear down and get a ground out and then a strikeout of Tom Heidegger to end the inning with both runners stranded and the score still tied at zero. Ramsey had a quick outing in the bottom of the second inning. He'll start things off by knocking down a shot up the middle and throwing to first for an easy out, then follows that with a strikeout and a ground out. Hidden Valley did get to Ramsey for three runs in the bottom of the third inning thanks to back-to-back -back homers from Jeff Peterson and Henry Cedabaca, but Medford rallied for six runs in the top of the fifth to take control of game one for good. The Black Tornado won the opener by a 10 to eight count. There was also girls softball action at Hidden Valley today as the co-leaders of the S. Eric Harden and outfielder pitcher Chuck Cry. The Pels are off to a good start in the preseason. Armed with a 7-2 overall record, 2-0 in the SOC, Klamath Union will jump back in the league play this Saturday at home against Grants Pass. It's been a good preseason. You know, we've been done some things uh, very well, and we've done some things uh, very poorly. And uh, we've worked on those things, and we just keep working hard and then hope that the ball falls our way. Medford won the Southern Oregon Conference crown last year and advanced to the state playoffs with Eagle Point, who surprised Crater in the league playoffs. Looking at this year's conference race, Steen says you have to go with the Black Tornado once again. Uh, you got to go with Roseburg number two. Uh, you got to look at Crater number three. Uh, Mazama is going to be right there, four or five. Uh, and you can't knock Hidden Valley out. Hidden Valley, we've already played this year and we're lucky enough to win two from them. They're a fine ball club. They were young last year with freshmen and sophomores. This year they're juniors. Uh, they're going to have most of these kids back next year. And by golly, they, they're very aggressive and, and do some real good things. Steen also feels Roseburg and Medford should dominate the conference, and the other seven teams will battle for the remaining spots. In Klamath Falls, Matt Jarvis, Eyewitness Sports. Well, as we reported... SOC's baseball standings look like this. Klamath Union ends up first. Klamath Union will now go to the playoffs. Roseburg third, Crater fourth. Mazama and Hidden Valley finish in a tie for fifth. Mazama gets into the playoffs, though. The Vikings will take on Medford at Medford. Crater will be at Roseburg in the conference playoffs. In the SOC softball standings now, Roseburg wins the title at 15 and 1. They are going to state. Medford is second, Mazama third, Crater fourth, and Hidden Valley fifth. Medford will host Hidden Valley, and Crater will take on Mazama in the conference finals. Now in golf. Encounter. And those first two hitters walked in the bottom of the first, and both Alex Onofre and Pete Marshall came in to score to open up a 2 to nothing Medford lead, but some good pitching and defense kept it a 2 to nothing game to the midway point. Shen Yokozawa's single over second loaded the bases for Medford in the bottom of the first, but Mazama Jr. Gary Cooper works out of the jam. He gets Taylor Grimes on the strikeout, and it's the Black Tornado by two after one complete. Senior Jamie Ramsey is on the mound for Medford, and he gets some solid backup in the top of the second. Troy Ferguson socks a single pass third to lead things off, 
But Pete Marshall gets in front of the next one that's hit his way. He snags a grounder and fires to Onifre, who flips it to first and a stretching dirt tie for the double play. Ramsey gets out of it with a strikeout on the next hitter, but Cooper will put together a quiet bottom of the second for the Vikes. Mike Novosad will chase down a Medford pop-up to shallow center, and there's no blood in the second inning. Mazama loaded the bases with one out in the top of the third, but the Vikings came away empty. With two on and one out, Ramsey bobbles the bunt, and three men are aboard, but Medford comes up with a 4-6-3 double play to get out of the jam. The throw over to first is close, but the Black Tornado get the call. Medford got a scoring opportunity in the bottom of the third. Jeff Berry led things off with a rope single to center, and after stealing second and being sacrificed down to third, he's stranded when Cooper gets Grimes to bounce out to Novosad at second. It's 2-0 Medford through three complete. Joe Brett reporting, Eyewitness Sports. Final score from that game at Miles Field, Medford wins it 12-0 via the 10-run rule. The winner of that game, Medford, now meets the winner of today's Roseburg Crater game that was played at 4.30 this afternoon in Roseburg. No final is in on that game just yet, but we will have highlights of that contest for you at 11 o'clock tonight. Eyewitness Sports, the only place that you'll get both playoff games today. Miles Field against Mazama, Medford scored two runs in the bottom of the first inning to grab a quick lead of 2-0. Then the Black Tornado would do some more damage in the fourth. Catcher Dave Doherty will sky one to right field, but Mazama's Ken Patsky loses it in the sun. Dirk Ty, Alex Onifree, and Pete Marshall all came in to score. It was five zip Medford as Doherty ended up with the triple. But the fireworks really began in the next inning. Mazama pitchers started to have control problems as they walked in five runs in the fifth. Here Jeff Berry takes ball four while John Houston came in to score. It was 9 nothing. Medford would then end the game as the 10-run rule would come into effect. Greg Reese here lines one in the gap. Three-run score, final 12-zip Black Tornado. Also in Southern Oregon Conference playoff action today, Crater journeying to Roseburg and came away with a one-run victory. It'll be the Comets and Black Tornado tomorrow at 4 o'clock at Miles Field. The winner goes on to the state playoffs. For the loser, the season is over. Out of the water, Medford advances while Crater, their season is over. Also talk about it. the Black Tornado ripped the Crater. Comments. Others lost some real heartbreakers. It was a good day for the St. Mary's Crusaders as both playoff teams from that school have advanced to quarterfinal action and both will now be at home for games again Monday. First off at Miles Field in Medford, it's the St. Mary's boys taking playoffs on playoffs as they beat North Eugene 6-3. Jeff Berry had three doubles in a four-hit day while Shen Yokozawa also had four more of Medford's 16 hits, Jamie Ramsey went the distance for the Medford Black Tornado. The SOC champs from Klamath Union, meanwhile, saw their state title dreams die in a 4-3 loss at Columbia today. Jason Heisey went all 12 innings on the mound for the Pelicans, but Columbia beat him with a single run in the 12th. The Pels are out after a tough loss. Leading the Tornado to a 6-3 win over North Eugene, Dirk Ty had a pair of bases loaded singles as he collected four ribbies. Jeff Berry and Shin Yokozawa both had four hits apiece. However, there's bad news for the other Southern Oregon Conference representative. Klamath Union lost to Columbia 4-3. to That game went 11 innings. So now it looks like Medford will take on Tigard, who beat Madison earlier today. In double-A action today, the North Valley Knights humiliated... One state playoff win from the Oregon High School Baseball or Softball Championship Games and the Black Tornado finally have a home game to look forward to tomorrow when they host Milwaukee in a AAA baseball semifinal contest at Miles Field. The 1986 bunch at Medford is a much different team than the powerhouse Black Tornado squad that won the state title in 84. But as we see in this update, they're just seven good innings from the school's second state final berth in the last three years. Only three other AAA baseball teams besides Medford are working out in Oregon today. And after tomorrow's semifinal round, it will be down to just two. And the Black Tornado must get past a hard-hitting Milwaukee squad for a shot at the state title. This Black Tornado bunch has come a long way since the start of the season. And yesterday's 6-0 blanking of Tigard saw Medford put together a great team effort to complement pitcher Mike Smith's one-hitter. Head coach Jim McAbee and senior catcher Dave Doherty both feel that the team concept has been the key to the team's playoff success. Yeah, I, uh, they're playing uh, they're playing real well right now. We're playing good, solid defense. Uh, E.P. Marshall did a heck of a job third yesterday, knocked down several balls and threw people out. But so with that kind of defense behind you, it makes it a little easier to pitch and throw the ball in there, I think. And uh, 
and our kids are battlers. They're, I, I think it's a real team effort probably. That's Maybe that's uh, evident by the fact there's only one kid who maybe got all-star team, you know, So, and our team is still in the playoffs. So that says something for us right there. Right now, no one really cares about how young anyone is, and after first year we had a few differences but now we're playing as a team we're like one big family we all like each other and we all play real well together and I think that's what it, what's attributing to the team winning not because we have two or three superstars but we have great team unity and that's showing up right now along with solid defensive play Medford has had steady pitching from Jamie Ramsey and Mike Smith while junior Jeff Berry battled injuries Pitching coach Leo Knorr brought Ramsey and Smith along nicely, and they both have playoff wins to their credit now. The youngsters say they haven't been overpowering people, just working well with the defense. Well, I think we've been pitching fairly consistently all year. We just, uh, we don't really throw real hard, so we don't really get a lot of press and stuff, but uh, we've just tried to keep the ball low at the kneecaps and let the defense do the work, and it's working. Defense is playing consistently, and our hitting is coming around finally, and we're playing really well. It's been great, you know, we've been playing good defense and uh, no errors behind you. You feel solid pitch and you can let them hit the ball. You know, you know your defense is going to do it for you. After two long road trips, the Black Tornado finally get to play tomorrow's 4.30 semifinal at Miles Field. They'll face an opponent that likes to hit the ball and Maccabee will start Ramsey after four good days of rest. Joe Brett reporting, Eyewitness Sports. In AAA softball play yesterday, Loser, they are done for the season, and as Sports Watch 12 Steve Friedman witnessed, the Medford Mystique alive and well. The tornado wins it in extra innings. Medford trailed almost the entire game, down one nothing. Bill Clare gets a hold of this Jamie Ramsey offering, and it's gone. A solo home run. Ramsey had some control problems early, but he pitched much better later on. Milwaukee led it two to zero in the fourth. The Medford offense then came alive. With the bases loaded, Scott Hall sends a chopper to short. The Mustangs go for the double play, but the second baseman throws the ball away. Two tornadoes score. Game tied 2-2 in the fourth. In the sixth inning, Milwaukee up 3-2. Steve Nitzel hits a hard shot to center field. That brought in Ron Fashing. Mustangs led it 4-2, but they weren't done yet. John Wells at the plate. The suicide squeeze is on, and it works to perfection. Dan Ardvinson scores. Milwaukee takes a commanding 5-2 lead. Medford scored once in the sixth to make it 5-3, but then the Mustangs scored four times in the top of the seventh as Medford made some terrible errors and Milwaukee got some timely hits. This poor relay resulted in one of those runs. Jason Brown scoring. It was 9-3 Milwaukee going into the bottom of the seventh. But never count out the tornado. Medford got two quick runs, and with the bases loaded, John Houston launches a deep fly ball to center field. Three tornadoes come in to score. Houston with a double. Medford unbelievably within one run at 9-8. The Black Tornado then needed one more hit to tie the game, and Jeff Berry got one. He nails the pitch right between the third baseman and the shortstop. Houston comes in to score the tying run. It's 9-9, and Milwaukee was in a state of shock as the Tornado scored six runs in the seventh inning. It stayed tied until the bottom of the ninth. Alex Onofre on second. Pete Marshall at the plate, and he smacks one into left field. Onofre turns on the speed and scores the game winner. Medford shocks Milwaukee 10-9 in nine innings. The Black Tornado will now play Corvallis for the AAA State Baseball Championship. At Miles Field, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. And two other scores of local interest to pass along tonight in the single-A baseball playoffs. Action. Medford was down by six runs in the bottom half of the seventh inning, but they came back to tie it at nine apiece and then eventually won it over Milwaukee 10 to nine. The visitors swung a mean bat through most of the game. Here, infielder Steve Nitzel hits a shot into the gap. Ron Fashing will score from second base as things were looking up for Milwaukee as they led it five to three. Things even look better when the next batter, John Wells, gets the squeeze sign. He executes the play to perfection as Dan Absenson will score, and it looked like Milwaukee was on their way to another state playoff game. But as usual, the Black Tornado would not give up after being down 9-3 in the seventh. Medford would tie it in their half of the inning and send it into extra innings. They'd finally pull it out in the ninth, winning it 10-9. Here's Shin Yokozawa scores on the play. Medford has now won three consecutive state playoff games as they advance later in the week for their fourth. So now it looks like Medford will travel to Roseburg or Eugene to take on Corvallis. Tomorrow's AAA state championship showdown with Corvallis. Now Sports Watch 12's Steve Friedman went to practice this afternoon to sample the team's outlook the day before the big game. 
What transpired Wednesday night might be considered one of the greatest comeback wins in Medford baseball history. The Black Tornado scored six runs in the bottom of the seventh inning to tie the Milwaukee Mustangs at 9-9. Medford then went on to win it 10-9 in the bottom of the ninth inning. Once again, that Medford magic rose to the forefront. I remember when I was up to bat, I looked over there and they were already out of their dugout ready to go jump on the pitcher. And then when we came back like that, they started working their way back into the dugout slowly and slowly, and they never got their chance to come out and dive on their pitcher like they wanted to. <laughs> we go out and expect to win, and uh, I think our community backs us in that respect too. So uh, after you once get into that groove of winning a few, then tradition maybe starts uh, getting there too a little bit into the picture. So you know, then you feel like, uh, and we can do it, we can do it. And so that coupled with the abilities that you have out there together uh, seemed to give us a lot of success. We started scoring a lot of runs in a hurry and, you know, everybody started to pick up and, you know, got 9-9. Nine, nine, and then I, I just, I had a feeling we we're going to do it once 9-9 nine, because nine, they couldn't put us away after that. Medford will now take on the number one ranked Corvallis Spartans for the state championship. And once again, the Black Tornado will be the underdog. For one more game, the community, the school, and the students will be unified and ready to bring home one more title. We're pretty confident that we can do it. Um, you know, we're coming in as dark horse, so there's no pressure on us. They're overwhelmingly favored, and uh, we don't have anything to worry about. We just have to go out there and play our game, and I think we have a shot. We need to get good pitching. Uh, they have a real good hitting ball club. Make the routine plays and swing the bats consistently. And if we do that, we have a good shot at winning the game. I think if we uh, hit the ball like we did against North Eugene and hit the ball like we did against Milwaukee and not make any costly errors at the wrong times and play solid defense, I think we have a chance of winning. And no matter how small the chance, you can never count out the Black Tornado. At Medford High School, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. One afternoon game in the majors, the Cubs host there and he has these highlights. Medford starter Mike Smith pitched out of two bases loaded innings and did a fine job in his four and a half innings of work, but Corvallis pitcher Derek Hyden was also impressive. He stymied the Tornado batters for four scoreless innings. The Spartans got on the scoreboard first. In the third inning, Eric Demick slaps a single into center field. Hyden comes in to beat the throw. It was one to zero Corvallis after three. In the fifth inning, an extra spectator took a long look at that impressive Corvallis bench and then made his way to the bleachers to watch the Spartans score two more times. Demick again with the RBI. This sacrifice fly brings home Scott Nelson from third base. Corvallis led it two to zero. The Spartans got another run when Jason Phillips connects on this Smith pitch and goes to the opposite field. Lenny McGuire scores. It's 3-0 Corvallis in the fifth. Medford got on the scoreboard in the bottom of the fifth inning. Greg Reese doubled. Shin Yokozawa pinch ran for Reese and moved to third base. Dirk Ty then flied out to Demick in center field, but Demick threw the ball away and Yokozawa scored. Medford trailed 3-1. Corvallis got that run right back, though. Brian Champion takes Jamie Ramsey in relief of Smith out of the ballpark. A solo home run, and Corvallis led it 4-1 to one in the sixth inning. Medford looked as if they would have a big bottom of the sixth inning. Pete Marshall's chopper brings home John Houston. It's 4-2. to two. But Dave Doherty grounded into a double play that snuffed out the Black Tornado rally, and it stayed at 4-2. The Spartans got one more run in the seventh to make it 5-2. Medford tried to turn things around in the bottom of the seventh, but it just wasn't to be. Corvallis wins the AAA State Baseball Championship 5-2 over Medford, but the Black Tornado plays second at state. We're a real proud of ball club. They don't have anything to hang their head about. Uh, being second in this state isn't, uh, which I think is a pretty good baseball state for being in the Northwest. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We came from, out of the 16-team tournament, we were probably ranked about 14th, 15th or 16th, and here we are, you know, second place in the state. We weren't expected to go this far, but we kept pushing, and, and we made it. At Legion Field in Roseburg, Steve Friedman, Sports Watch 12. And congratulations to the Black Tornado. They've done Came good. in second at state, losing 5-2 to, to the Corvallis Spartans in the championship game. 
Medford was in it all the way, but they just came up a little bit short. Medford starter Mike Smith pitched out of two bases loaded innings and did a fine job in his four and a half innings of work, but Corvallis pitcher Derek Hyden was also impressive. He stymied the Tornado batters for four scoreless innings. The Spartans got on the scoreboard first. In the third inning, Eric Demick slaps a single into center field. Hyden comes in to beat the throw. It was 1-0 Corvallis after three. In the fifth inning, an extra spectator took a long look at that impressive Corvallis bench and then made his way to the bleachers to watch the Spartans score two more times. Demick again with the RBI. This sacrifice fly brings home Scott Nelson from third base. Corvallis led it 2-0. The Spartans got another run when Jason Phillips connects on this Smith pitch and goes to the opposite field. Lenny McGuire scores. It's 3-0 Corvallis in the fifth. Medford got on the scoreboard in the bottom of the fifth inning. Greg Reese doubled. Shin Yokozawa pinch ran for Reese and moved to third base. Dirk Ty then flied out to Demick in center field, but Demick threw the ball away and Yokozawa scored. Medford trailed 3-1. Corvallis got that run right back, though. Brian Champion takes Jamie Ramsey in relief of Smith out of the ballpark. A solo home run, and Corvallis led it 4-1 to in the sixth inning. Medford looked as if they would have a big bottom of the sixth inning. Pete Marshall's chopper brings home John Houston. It's 4-2. to But Dave Doherty grounded into a double play that snuffed out the Black Tornado rally, and it stayed at 4-2. The Spartans got one more run in the seventh to make it 5-2. Medford tried to turn things around in the bottom of the seventh, but it just wasn't to be. Corvallis wins the AAA State Baseball Championship 5-2 over Medford, but the Black Tornado plays second at state. We're a real proud ball club. They don't have anything to hang their head about. Uh, being second in this state isn't, uh, I think it's a pretty good baseball state for being in the Northwest. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We came from... Out of the 16-team tournament, we were probably ranked about 14th, 15th, or 16th, and here we are, you know, second place in the state. We weren't expected to go this far, but we kept pushing, and, and we made it. Now, Medford finishes the season with a 25-6 and six record overall. They are the second-place team in the state. There is the trophy, an excellent season for the Black Tornado. At the French Open, the big news is hard after Jeff Barry bloops a single up the middle with two outs in the first inning. And things began to happen for the Mustangs. As their three-year veteran Dave Doherty will smack a triple to right, Barry will score easily. The Mustangs would eventually go up 5-1, to one, but they would blow the lead in the seventh as Albany would score five times. Final 6-5 to five, Albany. The Mustangs play tomorrow at Miles Field at 1 o'clock and at 4 o'clock. weekend of play this afternoon in Medford. The Klamath Falls Falcons put a stranglehold on the league title with a doubleheader sweep of the drive and save Mustangs. K Falls overcame an early four-run deficit in a 9-4 win in the opening game. Then the Falcons opened up a quick 7-0 lead in the nightcap. Dan Miles' troops were able to score four runs in the top of the first inning of game two, and then we'll see them add three more to that total in the top of the second inning as the Falcons had the hot bats going. Don Sizemore greets reliever Mike Pernesti with a line drive single to center. That put runners at the corners at first and third. Chuck Kripe is next, and with Sizemore running from first, he sends a perfect hit and run single through the hole at short. Tom Loney scores, and it's a five to nothing ball game. Troy Ferguson follows with the Falcons' third straight hit of the inning. It's a soft single to center, and Sizemore will wheel around third and into score, that making it six to nothing as the Falcons' rally continues. After a sacrifice bunt to push the runners ahead, Mike Novosad sends a grounder to short. Scott Hall's only play is at first, and the Falcons have opened a 7-0 lead. That would be plenty this afternoon for pitcher Mike Collins. The Henley product won his first nine games of the summer. Then after losing his last two decisions, Collin looks sharp in picking up his 10th win. That strikeout ends the bottom of the second, and he shut Medford out until the bottom of the seventh. The hitting star for the Falcons today was Tom Loney. Loney grounded to third in his first at-bat of the day, but here in the top of the third, he lines a single out to center. That was his seventh straight hit of the twin bill. The Falcons go on to post a 7-2 win up to a league record to 20-4. Coach Dan Miles said afterwards that he's proud of the determined effort his team has put forth this summer in the tough Area 4 race. Joey, that's a great league. You know, we're, uh, we, we're just hoping this time of the season have a chance to be in the playoffs. Right now we've got a chance possibly number one, and, 
know, we lost Jason the other day, and we've won, beat, swept Medford and Roseburg without him, and which is a real plus because get a couple of our other kids have come along pitching wise, and a great job for us. The Falcons will try and wrap up the league title in Eugene this weekend with games against Springfield and the Pepsi Challengers. The Falcons have already won 40 games for the summer, and Miles and assistant coach Dave Hummel say they're enjoying the program. Well, we had the team 10 years ago, and uh, when it opened up, Dave called me, wanted to know if I'd be interested in getting back into it. And it's one of the reasons I got back into it because he's fun to work with, and um, just you know, baseball is my favorite sport, and it's fun to be back into it. And while the Falcons try to wrap up first place, Roseburg moved into second place with a sweep of Eugene yesterday. We'll have the highlights of that Roseburg-Eugene doubleheader a little bit later for you tonight.